Hello, and welcome to today's ICMI webinar. We're glad you've joined us for Is There a Place for Video in the Contact Center? I'm Tim McElgin. I'm the Editorial Manager and Principal Analyst at ICMI. I'll be your host for today's session. Uh, just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. Uh, if you have any technical di difficulties during today's session, just hit F5 and refresh your browser window. Uh, if you need further assistance, just click on the yellow help icon uh, below the slides and uh, one of our, our techs will get on with you and, and make sure that that gets, uh, gets fixed. Enable pop-ups within your browser. Uh, make sure that you've got the system sound uh, set the way you want it. Uh, if you have any questions for our presenters uh, anytime, uh, go ahead and type those into the Q&A window on the side of your screen, hit the submit button. Um, just to let you all know, due to time constraints, we'll probably only be able to answer a limited number of questions today, uh, but we'll get back to you with uh, responses just as soon as we can. Um, oops, I've just changed my screen here, so if you give me just a second to uh, resize things, I apologize for that. Uh, Right, and uh, as I said, technical problems, just uh, click help or submit a question and you'll get assistance right away. Um, very proud and uh, happy to introduce our, our featured presenters today. We've got Vernon Fernandez, Senior Manager of Contact Centers, <clears throat> excuse me, excellent at Jabra. And I will also apologize for the occasional cough. I'm uh, dealing with a little bit of a cold. Um, so uh, Vernon Fernandez uh, from Jabra and Josh Stanley from Zoom. Uh, with over 20 years experience providing voice and networking solutions, Vern provides thought leadership on intelligent endpoint devices uh, to improve customer and agent experiences, decrease the average handle time, uh, and maximize contact center investments. Vern and his team at Jabra are constantly exploring development opportunities for real-time analytics, diagnostics, agent self-coaching, gamification, and also the use cases for AI through Jabra's digital devices, integration partners, and alliances. Uh, welcome, Vern, and thank you for joining us here. Great to be Josh here. Josh Stanley. Thanks, yep, it's great. Josh Stanley uh, joined Zoom in April 2019. He's been part of bringing Zoom phone to market, helping guide its growth from infancy to over 3 million users and counting. First time that I wrote up this slide, it was 2 million users. Uh, Josh let me know this morning that that's already jumped to 3 million. Uh, so truly 3 million users and counting. Josh now leads sales strategy for Zoom Contact Center focusing on expanding the product line, capturing new routes to market, and improving processes to, ca <clears throat> to capture greater market share. Prior to Zoom, Josh spent nine years at Cisco in sales, leadership, and partner development roles. And Josh has spent time in the trenches. He spent 10 years managing a contact center at Merrill Lynch. So thank you, Vern, and thank you, Josh, for sharing your insight with us here today. And thank you, Jabra, for sponsoring today's webinar. So, all right, before we dive in to the discussion today, uh, I want to share <clears throat> some of the uh, stats that we've got from recent uh, research conducted both here at ICMI and also uh, by our corporate uh, sibling at Omdia. Um, as our audience knows, video is a relatively recent but increasingly important tool for contact centers. And unsurprisingly, adoption is ramping up rapidly as we've all become video native in our personal and professional lives over the last couple of years. And in a June 2019 ICMI survey of primarily North America based contact center professionals, just 6% of respondents told that they supported video in their multi-channel or omni-channel contact centers. Uh, earlier this year, we did a survey in, uh, in February and March. Uh, that percentage had jumped to just under 14% uh, that already support video in their multi-channel or omni-channel contact center, uh, and another 14% telling us that they're planning to add video over the next 12 months. Uh, globally, adoption rates are even higher. Uh, Omdian's 2022 IT enterprise <clears throat> excuse me, Enterprise Insights Survey found that 26.6 of respondents have a strategic or new investment plan for video and chat, uh, video chat or engagement tech in 2022. 34.9% have a minor investment and upgrade plan for this year. And only 8.5% of more than 4,700 respondents worldwide said they don't plan to make an investment in video chat engagement tech in 2022. So that's what the recent surveys tell us. And now we're going to hear from the folks on the ground who are working to help contact centers add or expand video channels uh, to better serve their customers. And I'm going to start off with Josh. Josh, can you share your perspective on the current status of video in contact centers? As you're working with your clients, what are they telling you about why they're adding or considering adding video to their tool set? Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for the opportunity, Tim. I appreciate it. Um, I would say in most cases today, video is broken if it's being deployed in the contact center. There's a great deal of friction that's involved uh, in the process. And what they're looking to solve for is ways to be able to better connect 
with their customer in a more personalized way. Um, and it's not necessarily the agent that they're looking to now video enable, right? So they're looking, of course, the pandemic sort of thrust us into trying to find creative ways to be able to connect and personalize communications. Uh, and that was done initially through things like chat tools, things like, you know, um, moving uh, phone systems to the cloud, um, you know, supporting and, and leveraging video conferencing technology to be able to bring everybody together in a more personalized way. And this is just that next evolution. If it, if it worked for our business during the pandemic, when we had everybody in different places, how can we better connect with our customers during that period of time? And keep in mind, a lot of vendors struggled mightily when they, they forced employees home, they forced and limited the ability for consumers to be able to walk into retail locations or physical footprint. So trying to find creative ways outside of traditional channels today, voice, chat, SMS, to be able to connect and have deeper, richer, personalized experiences. And we're seeing cases where, you know, it's not necessarily about just service or support. It's they're looking at it to, you know, how can I shorten the sales cycle to be able to connect mm. with a prospect uh, that's on my website sooner in the process, but do that in a more creative way where I can leverage skills and routing patterns uh, to be able to more effectively, uh, you know, service that prospect, right? So both on the pre-sales as well as the post-sales side. Great. Vern, Vern, what are you hearing at Jabra? Obviously it led you to establish a partnership with Zoom. What, what are you guys hearing uh, regarding video in the contact center? Yeah, so we're absolutely preparing for it. And, you know, I'm using a Jabra camera as we speak. And in partnering with Zoom, you know, they kind of became a de facto Kleenex during this pandemic, right? People Zoom now these days. It's a verb, mm -hmm. right? And so one of those things really attracted us to Zoom. And we've been working with them on some integrations to make the experience seamless for their users. And what we provide is kind of a wearable experience as part of that, complementing um, what Zoom can do, but also taking care of the agent and where the agent can work or where the customer service professional can work as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we're really focused on that wearable part of the experience and making it um, you know, the ultimate kit for customer experience, especially for the person servicing the customer. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, so, you know, we've, we've talked about it already. Everybody's very aware of it. We're all used to ubiquitous video communication at this point, but every tool uh, that is brought into the contact center faces some resistance when it's introduced, whether it's from agents or, or from customers. So I'm gonna stay with you, Vern. What, what are some of the challenges that contact centers are encountering or anticipating when it comes to adding video? Okay, so I'm gonna focus on stuff that's kind of within, within our bailiwick here. Um, there's always going to be a bandwidth question, right? And we'll leave mm -hmm. that to the bandwidth people to discuss. But from our um, standpoint, finding the right camera and audio is challenging to you know make that customer experience happen. So what we do is we really focus on um, if you're going to use video, how do we enable that experience, right? Um, if a customer service professional is going to bring in a resource to come in on video and then the agent's going to use video themselves, that person or resource could be anywhere. And I'm in here mm -hmm. in a coffee shop, you know, on purpose because this could be the resource that pops in to help you out on Zoom. Um, and you have no idea where in the world they're going to be. A lot of the agents, uh, you know, they're starting out um, working at home and in the office as kind of the hybrid agent. But we know they're going to they're gonna want to work wherever they want at some point. You've given them a taste of freedom. How do I deal with that? So I need a camera that allows me to deal with the lighting from this back right wall. I need mm -hmm. a camera that gives me some, um, some capability um, to be able to enable that person to do um, interesting things like, uh, you know, I, I'll show you kind of how we can use presets on my camera and then do picture in picture so you can see me while I show something. If I were about to demonstrate something, how does that work for a customer service professional, right? So I'll mm -hmm. take that off a bit here. But we're putting a few things in our digital cameras to kind of take away that friction and allow a seamless experience that's very clear um, for those people that, you know, are going to be doing that job. And then from a personal point of view, I think one of the challenges is that when you enable a customer service professional, uh, you know, when we all kind of left the cubes and some of us have been home for a while, but people kind of expressed culture through their cubes 
And now that people are at home, what is the culture behind me? You know, when you start to see it on video, is it a message of freedom that I can work wherever I want? Is it a green screen from Josh and Zoom? Um, is it the painting behind Josh? And how, how much does that become part of your messaging corporately? And what do you want to say? Um, how does that affect the, the professional um, that's also in that situation? What do they want to say personally? So I think all those things kind of become things to think about in terms of challenges when you consider a video contact center agent. Great. And, and Vern, do me a favor. You, you showed us this a little bit earlier. I think our audience will enjoy. If you could just cut your uh, your uh, sound, con uh, your sorry, my, my, my tech uh, brain is not working today. But yeah, if you, if you would just uh, change the, the uh, settings on your microphone so folks can hear what it's really like where you're sitting. Sure. This is what I'm camouflaging for you right now. I can hear all that noise. Lots of, can you hear that, Tim? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Steamer's going off. It's very loud. Right. So yeah, great great example of just how important the technology the technology is. So thank you. Josh, turning back to you, as our audience evaluates the benefits that video can bring uh, to the contact center, what are some of the speed bumps that they should anticipate? Well, first I'll say, uh, 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 nailed it, right? Like I, I completely agree from a hardware perspective, obviously audio is critical, connectivity bandwidth is critical. There are vendors that do a more efficient job of handling challenging bandwidth. So make sure that you understand sort of what, what are those expectations for your agents? What is their typical connectivity, but don't base it on standard or average. Uh, you you want to provide and build a connection that can handle the heaviest traffic, the most difficult traffic, um, and then and then be able to scale down from there. Uh, from from there, I would say the other challenge is a lot of times today, um, video in the contact center is just it's an afterthought, right? It's typically a different vendor, it's a different uh, skill set in general. It's bolt on, and that's the friction that you feel as a result of using it. And if you feel the friction at an agent level or an administrator level. Um, rest assured your customer is going to feel it times 10, right? And that's that's the important part is that you make it so streamlined, no downloads required, automate things like microphone selection and video selection as much as possible uh, and streamline that. And then the more you can provide a more advanced experience around routing that video. So there's no shortage of vendors out there that do video, um, but how can we get intelligent in terms of how I take that customer's need and through Things like video IVR, video waiting rooms, uh, video uh, message broadcast. We can start getting very advanced and almost entertain the customer as they're going and educate the customer on your product or your services so that they can pre-sell themselves uh, before they get to the agent if it's in a pre-sale cycle. So um, think about the full cycle. Where are your agents sitting? What's the possibility? How they're connected? Um, what's in front of them, what's behind of them. Those are the things that you want to think about. How are you going to use it for it? You want to make sure that it's intelligent in terms of being able to allow the right prospects or the right customers uh, from your website or your application to be able to initiate these, uh, these types of conversations because video can be expensive. It can be challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to streamline that, start small, and then expand from there uh, where you're going to get the greatest, more personalized experience with video. Right, and, and clearly, uh, absolutely critical to do that assessment ahead of time because uh, the worst thing that can happen is for somebody to come in, choose your video channel, and then have a really rotten experience because it's going to be uh, it's going to be a turnoff and, and a very good chance that it's just going to uh, destroy your relationship with that customer uh, at a point where you know hopefully what you're aiming for with the video technology is is really stepping that that experience up further. Um, so back to benefits, we talk constantly about the critical importance of empathy. Uh, in creating an excellent customer experience. And um, I'm wondering, Josh, if you can talk a little bit how video impacts that aspect of customer interactions uh, with the contact center. Oh boy, that's a, that's a great question. I think that with each more real time, more advanced type of communication, um, you, you inherently um, help your agents just become more empathetic. So, and, and consumers as well. I mean, we, we've all been on the other end of, a, of an upset customer um, that's working through web chat or social media or text message. And um, they can be pretty brave, right, on, on their, their d disdain sometimes, right? They've been very frustrated and they can just 
But when you connect uh, either verbally or maybe one step further visually, um, you can see that the other person on the other side of the line is, is a human too, right? They're, they're a person, right? And, and they, ha they have naturally, just as a result of looking at uh, an individual in the eye, um, you know, there's a greater sense of respect, both sides, from the agent to the mm -hmm. customer, the customer to the agent. And I think there's a natural connection that you can make um, if we're talking with our eyes uh, and our and our full uh, persona, uh, in addition to just just voice or just chat, right? So I think by default, that's probably the biggest value add. But then also you can start doing some things while we're leveraging the screen um, mm. to be able to help that customer. That's certainly going to add an empathy, right? If their main frustration or their challenge is getting things done um, over the voice uh, call or a, a chat, I might not be able to do some of the things I can do over video, like physically show you something, share out my mm -hmm. screen. Uh, pass files and content uh, across the connection. So we might be able to actually reduce that service uh, engagement uh, and be able to streamline uh, that that customer uh, and that agent and get them back to work, get the customer back to doing what they really want to do. Absolutely. Um, what do you see there, Vern, in terms of uh, video, using video or using video to help humanize the, the interaction between customer and, and, and agent? Well, let's start by looking at all the investments that happen before that opportunity begins, right? You've already sent out your messaging through LinkedIn, it's, and it's you're using outreach to do that, let's just say. And then uh, Salesforce is behind you to collect that information. And then all of a sudden, you've got this person that's willing to talk to you or maybe needs help with a product. Mm -hmm. And the one time they get to talk to you, you send them to a robot, Right. Um, and this is the bloodline that feeds your your business. Now, what's interesting is that people on the back end are investing in sentiment analysis and a bunch of different AI. And what agents see, because you don't use video, is like a little smiley face. Or there's mm -hmm. bots using speech to text to get kind of to, pull, to draw that information out. And uh, how, as much as that's useful, how effective is it compared to somebody being able to read? somebody like this, right? Um, it's very hard to read a smiley face because that's, there's so many windows behind that. So I think a balance of both types of technology are, are things to, to take advantage of to humanize the experience. So I also think that if you look at who the customers are in the future and who the agents are in the future and the customer spirits and professionals, mm -hmm. and I've got four kids and my daughter just looks at her friend doing homework on her screen, on their phones, and sometimes they don't even talk, right, to, to get their homework done, right? And so they're building trust and community during that right now. When that, when that generation grows up to expect customer service, and, and, and they're used to being digital natives and building trust on video, how are we gonna service that customer? You know, that's, that's they're gonna expect that from everybody that they do business with. Um, and mm -hmm. if we don't provide it, that's going to be to the detriment of the company that doesn't provide it. Now, in doing that, we've got to work on the empathetic skills of the actual um, agent themselves. So these are these are agents that are allowing the AI to do the work, the easy work. But by the time the problem comes to them, it's like complex. And mm -hmm. they have to really relate to the customer that this is a complex problem. And me showing that to you with my face, that's going to be very important to these customers in the future. And then... Also, agents taking this role of customer service professional, those are the people that we need to look at hiring, right? Um, mm -hmm. To show and create career ladders for people that can empathize using video. Yeah, I mean, said something first, there, Vern. If you don't ahead, mind, I'm I'd love to kind of pile on it. I, I, I think you, you made some great points there. One of the, one of the things that I think too, uh, uh, video helps to manage the worst case scenario, right? So. If I'm frustrated and I'm upset with a vendor that I'm working with, I imagine the worst case scenario. I imagine talking to a rep who's got their feet up on the desk that's barely and half listening to me, doing talking to their cube mates. Uh, you know, so I kind of so just being able to visually be able to see that individual connect face to face, see that they're trying, see that they're making an effort. By the way, it pulls the agent into ensuring that they're delivering that and sending that kind of message on the other end as well. So I think that's that's unique about video. Yeah, and yeah, if you don't I mean, know like, the answer, Tim, nope. Tim if, 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 if that profession, that customer service person doesn't know the answer, mm -hmm. it's okay, right, to, to, to know that somebody's going to be working on it and you get that feeling that they still feel you, you know? 
Yeah, absolutely. I've got a, a slightly embarrassing uh, personal um, experience to 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 uh, share with y'all. So I was just coming back from Vegas, and I was at the airport for my ten thirty red eye. Then it was delayed, and it was delayed. It was delayed. It was canceled. So I got on the phone with American, and I was unpleasant. I was tired. I was feeling a little bit sick. Um, I'd had maybe a little bit too much fun the night before in Vegas, uh, and I, I was I broke my own cardinal rule, which is never take it out on the on the agent on the other end of the line. They didn't make this problem happen. Um, they're trying their best to help. And then I went up to the gate agent in person, and I changed it all altogether because I remembered. I'm dealing with a human being. Right. This guy's got 100 and some passengers who are just, you know, in the same situation, the same mind frame I am. And it, and it helped me just, you know, bring it back down to a human level. Um, and, and I'm going to stop right here and, and actually take an opportunity to uh, to answer one of the questions that came in. Because uh, one of the other aspects, I think, of video, and you were talking about this, Vern, is the ability to show somebody, here's what I'm actually dealing with, right? right. Um, and that's very, very important in the contact center space. But it's also perhaps even more critically important in the tech support space. And that's where this question is from Mary Cruz. I think this opportunity goes well beyond the contact center. Desktop, desk side support has gone remote as well. Uh, creates a great opportunity for this team and i think one of the things that's really important to remember when you can show somebody something especially when it comes to tech type support is we're not speaking the same language all the time i'm not a techie yeah. i don't spend my days in the guts of my computer uh I'm, I'm just trying to explain what it is that i'm i'm dealing with and sometimes i'm not doing a good job uh and the only way that that tech is really going to be able to support me is if they come to understand what it is i'm trying to sell them or, or tell them excuse me not sell them and, and the ability to actually physically show them that is, is, is really important. So I'd like you guys to talk a little bit, uh, starting, I guess, with Josh. Uh, you know, how do you see this working at, beyond the contact center as we move into, you know, the tech support uh, realm? Yeah, so I, I, it's funny. I just got off uh, a the very large tech company that's trying to build out and deploy out their, um, their internal help desk and how they mm -hmm. support employees. And one of their biggest challenges, it's really voice only today. Uh, so when the call comes in, um, the agent spends a better part of the first two or three minutes converting that call to a ticket request, taking that ticket request, escalating it, launching into uh, some sort of screen sharing session, which is uh, outside of the existing solution they're using today. Uh, they get into that screen sharing system. We're still only voice and and screen share. It's two different streams, right? It's it, there's just a significant amount of, of uh, friction that's involved in the process for the agent and, and the customer. Um, so I, I would say one of the kind of big, huge opportunities is to start streamlining that and automating that as much as possible. So um, a customer could be, in this case of an internal help desk, it could be uh, an internal employee or an external help desk, it could be a, a, a consumer, a customer. Um, how you choose to be able to escalate uh, that support request is, is should be, and in, 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 in most cases, I think most of us would agree, should be the customer's choice. But we should be, mm. as a vendor, capable of being able to support them based on any of those choices, right? And and if you don't have that capability, you don't want to offer it. I think uh, Vern said earlier, you don't want to deliver a bad experience, but you want to have processes and systems in place to be able to support the best possible experience for that channel. Um, and what we can now do is to be able to have a badge on a website, click a button, and based on the experience that your consumer or your customer wants to have, they can have that. They can turn on video and have a video experience. They can leave video off and have a voice-only experience. At any point in time, they can share their screen or transfer a file or chat or transfer links, right? Like this. So, so ultimately, mm -hmm. this now can begin to start streamlining multiple channels right, into a single engagement. Uh, meaning I can start one way and provide the flexibility while on that call, while on that mm -hmm. engagement, uh, the ability to do and have a richer experience if I want to escalate that into more, right? So right. that's that's probably the biggest value add. And I think if you're talking support, it's almost always share your screen, right? Help me see what you're seeing. Let's solve this together. Let me install things and pass control, right? These are all things that you'd want to be able to do in some sort of re remote support session. Sure, and and Vern, what would you what would you say to to Mary's question about you know opportunities that are coming up in the support area uh, in terms of yeah. video? I could I could easily be a tier three tech support person here in this coffee shop, right? And mm -hmm. and you know when whenever you engage in those calls, you could have support coming in from three different countries, right? But what does it do for me as the human on the other side of that call? 
because I can work in here, I actually feel free, right? And there's a certain retention piece that you get out of that. When you mm -hmm. have better retention, because I feel free, then you keep the knowledge a little bit better, right? And so I think that there's advantages for people to work wherever they want and have the right devices. And I actually think that, you know, when the pandemic happened, especially people bought whatever headset or whatever camera, and it's been a wild west out there. And people mm -hmm. are sifting and sorting through, okay, what's good and what's not out there? What can really allow me to do the job? And there are norms starting to happen. And we're completely focused on those, not just what the device does, but how does the integration and the experience happen with Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. So that if you want to be a tier, tier three tech support, it can be anywhere. Two sure. Three, like, and, and you can you talk on the agent Asian side. Yeah. I'm sorry, go yeah. ahead. Well, I'm going to talk to the agent side, but for the customer side, they may be... They may be doing the same thing, bring in three people from all over the world too, and one might be on a mountain or in an RV. So mm. <laughs> now what? Let's let's give sure. them all a consistent experience. Sure. Continuing with this story, I, we're working with a customer now that um, ha has an interesting use case. The, the average sales price of the hardware that they sell, they sell manufacturing equipment, three hundred thousand dollars, right? And it's all over the world, fifty some plus countries, uh, and they don't have support representatives in fifty plus countries, right? But clearly, they have to find ways to be able to support all these remote locations. And mm -hmm. traditionally, it's been over a voice connection and then flying somebody out on site. Uh, and and what they're most excited about is bringing that visual experience because what they were doing before is taking pictures and sending it in, still images. Being able to just simply take that mobile device that they're they're initiating that engagement from an application, turn the camera around or just turn literally physically turn the camera around and be able to see. Uh, you know, travel all those miles in a matter of seconds to be able to connect and see the experience to support physical type uh, of, uh, of uh, products, right? Right. Yeah. Very, very powerful. Yeah. Um, let's get down to dollars and cents, right? So uh, our audience are folks who are out there trying to make decisions, trying to get budget. Um, when contact center leaders, like many of these people, uh, are working with the CFO to budget for video, Vern, how, how would you uh, help them make that ROI case? Um, well, let's take a look at what they're spending already on to, mm -hmm. to, to, to get empathy, right? So what are the license costs just for sentiment analysis that you might be considering to get that kind of customer insight, the real-time coaching, the real-time feedback from the customer? Let's take a look at those dollars that you can draw from. From our perspective, we provide the camera and the headset. I mean, that is a minimal cost to the experience that we can provide that once you don't have to worry about this, now you can feed, work on all the smart stuff you want to do with video and the integrations that Josh is talking about, but handle it at the edge first, and that's cheap compared to the rest of the, rest of the solution. So I would say that it's a very minimal cost. Um, for me, you'll notice that I don't have to worry about muting my button all the time because I know that you're getting a good experience. I've already saved four to five seconds of average channel time not muting, right? Mm -hmm. um, that right there in an ROI, if I run that ROI in a contact center is huge and I'm free to work here. So just, just count the seconds on how many times I'm not muting right now and repeating myself. And that's our ROI that will deliver to you. Yeah, and again, personally, as anybody who's attended uh, many of these webinars knows, uh, I have a tendency to mute myself so as not to let the dogs or the piano student in the, in the downstairs uh, bother our audience and then forget to unmute. So that's a huge benefit <laughs> for me yeah. personally. Josh, uh, what are the metrics or the quantifiable benefits that you think you should highlight? Right? We're talking to the CFO. They, they, they want to know how does this impact uh, you know, the, our, our bottom line? Uh, yeah, so there's there's two sides of that equation, right? The first is the obvious, and that's replacement cost. So if I'm taking mm -hmm. what's costing me X today and I'm moving it to a product that uh, costs Y uh, or a way to engage that costs Y, if there's a delta there, that's ROI, uh, either plus or minus, right? So that's pretty easy. Things like um, if you think about video, video now um, traditionally runs voice and video over an Internet connection. So immediately right out of the gates, you eliminate potentially inbound toll-free costs that could range from you know one, two, three, four cents a minute. Um, obviously in the contact center that can add up significantly, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We are seeing ROI benefits on the audio alone uh, to be able to implement uh, a video solution and to drive customers more to a digital uh, engagement strategy. Um, the other side of that equation is uh, improvements. It's much harder to be able to identify and really zero in on a, on a, on a hard dollar for improvements, mm -hmm. but there are ways to do this. We're working with a customer today 
um, that is frustrated. They're, it's a tech company, they heavily based on uh, software demos. So mm. customer comes in, they're kicking the tires on the website, um, they have a, an option to sign up for a demo. So basically that creates a back and forth between the sales team uh, and the customer to find a time that works and do a demo. And on average, it's six days, right? So it takes six days from the time the customer or a prospect in that stage is interested in the product to the actually competing the demo. And the, the real mm. scary thing is half of those customers fall out, meaning they never do the demo. So 50% loss right out of the gates, and it takes six days to get them what they've asked for. Imagine the ability to be able to press a button on that page's website, know exactly where they're coming from so I can more intelligently route it, connect them with somebody that can answer their questions right now, share their screen, demo the product, instead of that customer six days from now starting in stage zero or one of the sales process, they're coming out of that first engagement in stage two or three, or maybe even in the acquisition stage, right? So mm -hmm. it can shorten the sales cycle. What does that cost? A 50% loss lead rate and in six days delay, what is the cost of a business there? Hard to predict and really understand, but an enormous number that you could leverage in your calculating ROI. Sure, and and that that translates directly to customer satisfaction as well. And I, I think it was Gartner uh, recently uh, put out a stat that um, the first uh, poor experience uh, through a contact center, you're going to lose about 50% of those customers to uh, a competitor. The second time a customer has a poor experience with a contact center, that that jumps to about 80%. So, just just a huge huge impact uh, in terms of, of quality. Um, Josh, as I mentioned at the at the opening, you spent a lot of time managing a contact center. You've been down there in the trenches. You know exactly what uh, leadership is dealing with. You know what agents are dealing with. You know what customers are dealing with. Um, so you know how important, specifically, a consistent, high quality experience is for customer satisfaction, regardless of channel. Um, what are the must-haves in your view uh, that that are required to create a consistent quality video experience for customers and for agents? Well, I think, um, you know, probably first and foremost is it should operate much like the rest of the contact center, right? So how you're doing more advanced uh, uh, voice flows or chat flows, however you're doing that, customers may be able to transition from different channels. Um, they should have a consistent experience, right? So you should have things like, um, you know, uh, routing capabilities that allow uh, agents to have support for first call resolution. You should have things like sentiment. You should have things uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, guiding the agent and being able to streamline the connection. Right? These are all sort of critical things. Even though you're thinking video, you're thinking traditionally a, a video meeting, customers aren't thinking that way. They're thinking for support or service or pre-sales engagement, uh, and they expect the same thing they'd get from a voice uh, line. So I think that's pretty important. Mm -hmm. The more you can replicate that experience, the better. Um, you know, other things I'd say is, is uh, Vern will probably love this, right? Because video is only so good um, the minute I lose audio, uh, I don't, I mean, unless we're sign language, right. And we're able to communicate that way. I've got to have good quality audio connection, uh, and it's gotta be as consistent as possible. And that just means you've got to start thinking about, okay, how do I make it as easy as possible, uh, for the consumer to connect with me. But at the same time, I'm making it easy. I'm making it very capable, right? So the functionality and the quality of that experience while engaged. So things like being able to handle, um, you know, uh, fluctuations in bandwidth, which happen everywhere all the time. How do you, how can you support those things? Can we streamline those and have a quality experience? So absolutely critical. And I think the more you can wow your customer, the better you're off doing that. So things like being able to take that initial engagement and within seconds sharing your screen and supporting that customer because you know you have intelligence from them. That's what's going to, you know, there's one thing is sort of the minimum standard just to be able to say checkbox right? Mm -hmm. There's a whole different level that now we can begin to wow that customer uh, and surprise them so much that it's such a quality experience that they begin uh, to evangelize your business and the way in which they're supporting you. Sure, that's great. Vern, uh, obviously from, from your perspective, audio is, is king, or not king, uh, you're working very closely with Zoom, so, uh, uh, but What's, can you talk a little bit about uh, your perspective on the role of audio and enabling that, again, consistent quality experience for the, for the customer uh, coming through the video channel? Right, so there are things that you've got to consider as like, and I'll point them out as like, what, what can you hear while I'm talking? Mm -hmm. And what can you not hear while I'm not talking, right? So when I'm not talking, you're not hearing anything. And even when I am talking, you're not hearing the background noise, right? So from a very 
basic level, sound quality um, is a big deal. And we actually use very advanced algorithms to make this happen, right? It just doesn't happen because I stick a microphone head. There's actually a chipset inside of here giving you really good audio. Mm -hmm. um, we can also give you analytics of how the audio is, is around me. I can give you environmentals. I can tell you that it's about 68 decibels in here. And I have a metric that I can actually feed back to the contact center to help manage or even guide that agent in terms of the best place, places to work. Um, it's not just audio that we provide. It's also an analytic of, of things like crosstalk and silence. And is the agent talking? Is the customer talking? I can create real-time co coaching around that information as well. Mm -hmm. I can tell you how many times I'm muting from my headset because that affects average channel times and whether or not people feel like they're being listened to. And I can also, I can also do things like screen pop an agent if, if I might you might boom up like they can't hear me mm -hmm. so um and this here is the key to getting data for your contact center so we see voice is not just a good customer experience but it's providing good quality data for speech to text speech analytics agent assist voice biometrics these days translation mm -hmm. apps there's all kinds of things that voice depends on so um, you kind of all saw the demo of when I turned the laptop microphone on, and that's exactly what we want to provide for customers. Sure, and, and I think that's also really critical because um, when agents are being uh, measured on things like crosstalk, are they are they talking over the customer? Well, it's it's one thing if they're just doing their job poorly and not doing the listening gig, but if it's actually happening because the technology is not cleanly allowing them to know when the customer stopped talking and vice versa, now we're starting to measure something that they don't have a lot of control over, and that's you know that's simply simply unfair. But and the other thing I think that, that it brings up is it's just freedom, right? So freedom for agents to work wherever they want to be, freedom for customers to contact the contact center from wherever they happen to be and have an excellent uh, an excellent experience each time, yeah. and that has has real, real business implications in this, what I would say, permanent hybrid culture that we're all going to be living in right now, where, where folks right. are going to be working from all over the place, and they may work in some place different, as Vern knows very well, since he travels around uh, in his RV, uh, living the no-bad life, right. uh, while also doing <laughs> webinars like this and, and interacting uh, very closely with customers um, every single day. So that, that I think that yeah. that's a, a, a huge a huge benefit. Um, I wanted to just pause briefly, and, and Jessica, I just want to acknowledge your question. You, you had a very specific question about uh, practical applications in terms of medical emergencies and poison control contact centers. I'm, I'm just going to suggest that's a fantastic question, but in the context of this more general webinar, uh, probably probably we don't go too deep, but I would uh, definitely encourage you to contact uh, Josh and Vern uh, directly, um, you know, going forward and, and, and talk to them about those because I'm sure that they've got folks on their teams that would be more than happy to talk to you about that. So um, anything else to say, guys, on, on uh, the consistent high quality experience aspect of, of, of introducing video? I will say something to answer that question from Jessica real quick. Okay. I know that there are, Very good. there are frontline applications to both video and to audio and to have the right um, equipment when you go on site, whether that's an app or video through your phone, along with the right headset to cover up all the industrial noise that goes on in those areas. Mm. Um, we definitely have a frontline practice for those folks. Um, and we compliment those people that provide solutions on top of that too. Great. Yeah, and that creates okay. a whole different, uh, you know, open can of worms around ensuring sure. data privacy and, and, and security uh, with that as well. So you got to make sure you look for vendors that are able to deliver on those regulatory requirements. And, and I thank you, Josh, for the perfect segue, because we're going to move on now to security. And I know um, from from talking with Vern and, and uh, others over the, uh, the past few months, Jabra products support very high levels of security. Um, and that's an absolute requirement for contact centers, especially in situations like we were just talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, where there's um, sensitive personal or professional information in a voice environment. And I, I'm curious, uh, Vern, from your perspective, how, do, how does that translate to, to video? Um, yeah, so for video's sake, um, we actually have some developments coming out um, in the very f near future on the camera that I'm using where... Uh, we can provide some blurring capabilities as well, the same way that mm -hmm. Zoom can. And those are things that, you know, you have double, you know, double security measures. 
I also have little covers that mm-hmm. that are physical on my camera that I can kind of cover things up if I needed to. Um, there Post are no, right. There are certain features of the camera that I'm using. You know, that's our our, our Panacast 20 here, where um, you can do people counts as well. So mm-hmm. if you wanted to understand how many people are looking at a screen, you could do things like that. Um, and so we we have some security features within our cameras. And then in our audio devices, especially our wireless ones, you'll find like FIPS level 3C military grade encryption for our wireless connections for our decked um, devices. Not, um, you know, there's Bluetooth as a frequency out there to use, but we, in a contact center situation, you always want to use decked because you get the most security, you get the most wireless density, you can have more people in the room in the same place being Mm -hmm. hybrid workers coming in and out of a contact center and being wireless. So lots of different features that we offer from our perspective. Right. And and Josh, many of us read or experienced um, some of the unfortunate video security breaches in the early days, right? We all went home, we all turned on our cameras. Um, We didn't know what we were doing. Tech teams didn't necessarily know what they were doing. Um, But we've also followed the news as Zoom and and other uh, video providers have addressed those issues, right? So where, where do we stand right now? How do your clients ensure that there's a secure experience for their customers and also protect themselves and their agents in terms of compliance and, and security? Yeah, uh, good question, good point. Uh, obviously when the pandemic hit, gosh, I can't believe it, two and a half years ago almost, um, you said it, right? Almost overnight, our, group, our business grew 30 times. A lot of that, quite frankly, was um, given free access to a lot of people that have never not only hosted a meeting, but never even maybe joined a meeting. Like think about teachers, for example, we had tens of thousands of schools now get access at no cost uh, to Zoom, just to be able to keep uh, education going. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and, and you know, their focus was the kids. Their focus was educating. Their focus was uh, the lesson plans. It wasn't who would have thought, right, that somehow something like a Zoom bomb would uh, come into play and people were just dialing randomly into meetings and disrupting mm-hmm. the flow of the classroom and the students sharing those meeting IDs. So the good news, I don't want to suggest it was all the users um, no. fault because what we did learn is that there's better ways that we can structure the product to make it more obvious to use some of those security features. Things like being able to automatically lock the room after a period of time and physically having to enable and bring in a student that's joining late. Uh, it's the proverbial lock the door and the student has to has to knock on the door, right? Uh, multiple benefits to that. Um, but there's things that we can do, things like encryption, right? So we did learn from our users uh, almost overnight where we can improve. And we put a very, very rapid place in, uh, or process in place to be able to solve for many of those things. So the good news is uh, we're better as a result of going through that, uh, you know, short-term sure. frustration and pain, having learned uh, uh, these unique use cases, how else could, uh, um, you know, users be using video in, inside that environment. And as a result of that, it allows us to do automatically uh, what we're doing with video in the contact center uh, more secure and more capable. We can start uh, leveraging some of those uh, lessons learned that we had two plus years ago. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I feel very confident to say anybody who looks at what our security platform is because we've shifted the pendulum almost to the extreme opposite side and focused heavily on security uh, mm-hmm. with a balance of usability, right? And this is where, you know, that that world doesn't always work well together. The most secure sure. environments oftentimes are very, very inflexible. And uh, so what we want to do is provide the absolute best security for our customers. That's utmost priority number one. But we want to do it in a way that allows a great deal of flexibility. Vendors allow things like full encryption on meetings, but it's a different type of meeting. So you don't use the normal meeting that you're using. It's not the case with Zoom. It can be scheduled and coordinated in the admin to be able to just enable certain meetings or certain connections even as encrypted. So um, happy happy to see where we've come from and the short-term mm-hmm. pain certainly creates long-term gain for, for Zoom as well as all of our customers. Yeah, that's, that's great stuff. And obviously just 100% critical uh, at this point. Um, Marlene Bartram, you have asked a question that's very, very close to my own heart. I, I try to come at my job and, and, and the way I look at this industry and at the tech support industry uh, from a people first perspective. And, and your question is, uh, you all have shared a lot of benefit, a lot about the benefits for the client experience, which is great. Do you have any information or insights on what call center agents think of this? And I, I think that that's critical, right? I, I touched on it earlier. Where does the resistance come from? Uh, learning new tools. These folks are really busy. They're doing their best to do their job. Uh, 
you know, how, how are uh, agents reacting to the introduction of video into the contact center? Oh, which one was that for? Is that me? Uh, yeah, well, we'll start with Josh and we'll go to Burns. Sorry, okay. I should have so, specified. Cool. cool. You might have, and I just missed it. I, I, I would say- You can't read um, my mind just because we're on video? Yeah, Come right. on. <laughs> yeah we, haven't, we haven't developed that yet. Uh, probably a very good reason uh, for that. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I would say first and foremost is, is, is it can seem like another application, but in reality, if it's done right, it shouldn't be. It should be a part of the same application, same agent desktop experience they have today. It should be as consistent as possible. They should know ahead of time that they're taking a video call, of course. Um, so it should actually streamline the number of applications you have. If you're just talking about adding incremental applications on top, I would be very cautious about that because you're right. It's gonna impact adoption. It's gonna impact usability. It's going to impact the quality and you don't want to negatively impact any of those things for your customer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I wouldn't think about adding. I would think about consolidating and simplifying that footprint, doing and delivering a full omni-channel experience that just inserts video into those flows. Sure. And, and, and without <laughs> offering you an opportunity, Josh, to, to, to you know, make an advertisement, what are you actually hearing? What, what are your clients sharing back to you in terms of, of how agents are reacting in the real world uh, you know, as, as video is brought on? I would say most of our customers right now are deploying this out um, for a traditional agent that's voice only. They're deploying it out as a voice only service, right? Mm -hmm. But where they're doing is creatively rewriting the definition of an agent. So we might talk to a customer, actually I was talking right before this meeting, they had 30 agents, uh, true traditional voice agents and it was voice only. So then they started thinking, well, how could we start using uh, chat to be able to better service our consumers? How can we better service uh, SMS or use SMS. Then it turned into this, wow, like maybe we could use this in our sales process. Maybe we could use this in our post-sell implementation process, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now the definition of an agent is changing a little bit. It's not a traditional agent that's in those roles. It's somebody who connects with a customer virtually, oftentimes through a very inefficient schedule and hope somebody joins on time experience. And that's not as efficient doesn't work in the contact center the way we'd like it to. So um, it, what happens in these conversations, almost every single case is uh, it starts with voice and it works its way out. It starts with a select group of uh, agents that are already considered agents in um, in, in the world of, of contact center today. And it works its way out and it, and it begins to get on that fringe to say, boy, I sure would like to be able to more efficiently um, have our inside sales teams connect with our customers. Well, how can I do that? I sure would love to be able to streamline the number of engagements that it takes to implement our product. How can we do that? How do we support them? If we shorten that and we streamline it and we deploy the product faster, how do we support them during that post implementation? So mm -hmm. what it now allows us to be able to do is just to define, redefine what we think of an agent. Great. Vern, yeah. what are you hearing in, in terms of, you know, agent reaction to, to this, uh, you know, added channel uh, and, and the, the capabilities that it brings? Yeah, so every few years we actually, you know, ask agents what's going on with their experience and we'll be doing a lot more in video um, in the near future. Um, but in our last round of um, surveying, we found that many of them, because of the pandemic, are actually getting used to being measured, right? Mm -hmm. um, so metrics before when you're in brick and mortar, a little bit heavier than when you need those metrics to perform when you're a hybrid agent, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, the ultimate metric is to perform in front of a customer, right? Um, using video. So I think that there's gonna be a point in time where the ability to be measured using sentiment analysis and things like that um, can coincide with the ability to be measured as a video agent. Now. Culturally, what do I think that call centers need to do and, you know, professionals need to do? I think about what's behind me, you know, behind me, I'm, I'm, I'm in a Starbucks and every employee here gets face-to-face -face customer training, you know, <clears throat> in a more retail environment, because that's kind of what you're involved in as a video agent these days, mm -hmm. right? So a little bit more empathy training is what's going to be needed to perform in this, in this case. Right. And, and just uh, uh, what you meant to say, of course, was in an unnamed uh, coffee provider. Unnamed. Uh, Sorry about that. Facility. Our, <laughs> they were here. You're welcome. But, right. but yeah, but, but all, these, all these people got some kind of face-to-face -face customer service training, right? right. And I, I think that that's going to have to be part and parcel to the practice of uh, contact center culture. Yeah, and, and that, that's key. I mean, we, we see it across the board. Training is absolutely uh, a requirement. And I think what's an important... Um, uh, maybe nuance to that is it's great. You've got, you know, maybe 
two months, six months, whatever, whatever it's, uh, that's a little bit long, actually, probably more like two weeks to, to six weeks to maybe a, a couple of months as, as, for onboarding training to bring people up to speed. They're now proficient. They're able to do the job. But uh, there's also the, a huge need for ongoing training. And I think as you introduce video, that's that's absolutely uh, one of the areas that, that needs to be looked at. And I think contact center leaderships need to, to keep that in mind, that, that there is a, yeah. a, a training requirement that's, that's going to be involved in, in bringing this right. stuff on and making it successful. So, um, so we're getting close to the top of the hour here. This has been a, a really fantastic discussion. I thank you both uh, so much for sharing your expertise and, and some truly valuable insight. And, and I'd like to close with some final thoughts from both of you. I'm going to leave that open. I'm going to start with you, Vern, you first. What's your elevator pitch to a contact center leader or a decision maker, any decision maker uh, in an uh, organization for that matter, um, that's exploring a contact center video solution? How do, how do you make that case quick and, and dirty? It's pretty easy. There's a proof of concept on the whole thing. So try it out with 50 agents. Try it out with 10 agents. See how it goes for you, how it changes your culture, how it pro provides more CSAT and NPS because all those measurements behind an increase, increase in CSAT and NPS are, are supporting the fact that video agents actually offer better connection with the customers. So try it out, mm -hmm. I would say. There's no real loss in trying it out with a certain group of agents and and. And also create a career path for those agents, right? These agents want to mm -hmm. move up, right? Think of the think of what you can do within those within your companies of okay, you start as an agent, then you go to video agent, and then all of a sudden you're in sales or you're in marketing and because you've proven yourself as a person that can move up. So give them opportunity as part of this. I think it's really important too. The human part of this. Mm-hmm. Great. Josh, what, what advice do you share? What are some of the critical factors that you're telling they need to think about, they need to, to address uh, as, they're, as, they're, as they're selecting a solution for, for video in the contact center? Uh, well, first, I would say it, it can be worked on in a, in a silo. So if you start thinking mm -hmm. about the channels you support and you just start incrementally adding these new channels as, as they evolve and customers start expecting them, you're going to overwhelm your agents, you're going to overwhelm your supervisors, you're going to overwhelm your customers. Right. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't necessarily be looking at what's the next or the newest channel that I'm supporting today, but what's going to be the expectations that my customers, my consumers expect me to be able to service them on over the next five years or even seven years. And then how do you predict that? And you, how do you bring those all together in a truly unified uh, contact center as a service? Right. That was a buzzword for, for the, mm -hmm. the PBX world for a long time. But truly unifying and the way I define unification is unifying both the contact center customer facing front of the house and the back office communications platform, the knowledge workers that are supporting those agents in front of the customer. How do I connect an agent? To the in the best, most efficient, most effective way to everybody else, not only in the organization, but even outside the organization, where we can bridge the contact center as a service and the U UCAS, UCAS as a service uh, mm -hmm. solution together for one total experience, employees and customer software bringing together. So look at everything together, front of the house, back of the house, look at all your channels together and then predict the future. And that's what you should be focusing on deploying today, not just bolting on uh, different channels. Great, and, and I, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that um, uh, that brings up a, a really uh, important point, which I, of course, as soon as I started to say that, it, it flew out of my head because uh, <laughs> that's the way it goes, and I'm trying to absorb everything you guys had to say. Mary, um, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and read this to you uh, because I think it's really important. It says, uh, bringing video actually adds back that in-person skill set that's not been a consideration for contact centers for so long. It's like when chat was yeah. added, it brought a whole different set of skills and different training, and, and not everybody in the center can do everything. And I would say they can't do everything today with proper training. Uh, what we know about contact center agents, and this is based on, on surveys, not just on my own opinion, is they love doing their job. They love helping customers. So anything that it allows them to, to get better at doing that, um, they embrace it. And, and they really want to uh, they want to be able to to learn how to uh, how to use these tools uh, and, and use them effectively so thanks Mary for, for bringing that up I, I do appreciate that uh, that thought for sure and I I absolutely love that comment Tim because people are rewarded by smiles through video you know mm -hmm. it's good for the agent it's good for the customer we have to remember that and this forces people to actually work on communicating to each other right and to me they're 
that's the most noble cause in video mm -hmm. with the contact center is people communicating better and got heaven knows we need it today right these days so mm -hmm. <laughs> i think it's a great thing to be able to entertain this concept of video in the contact mm -hmm. center Great. And, and of course, uh, I, I've now remembered, uh, and, and the reason I, I flew out of my head was because it was just too big a concept. Uh, and in fact, it is uh, probably a subject for, for multiple webinars, not just one standalone webinar. And that's uh, the impact uh, and the place for video in terms of knowledge management. And then we think about training, we think about sharing knowledge, we think about in, in an in a, uh, industry that has constant rapid turnover, uh, how do you preserve knowledge? How do you preserve uh, you know the the uh, the hard won expertise of folks who are moving on to other opportunities uh, every single day, and I think that over time, uh, video is going to play a huge role in the knowledge management piece of this as well. Uh, we're going to move on now. Uh, if there's any further questions, uh, please go ahead and type those questions into the box. We'll we'll answer as many as we can in the time that we've got left, which is more or less uh, four minutes, four and a half minutes. Uh, and then also, I would encourage you to go ahead and, and submit any questions you have uh, through ICMI. We'll share those with our presenters today and, and get back to you uh, with, with their with their thoughts and, and perspectives. So uh, anybody at all, please go ahead and, and type your questions in that Q&A box and we will get uh, get answers out to you. Uh, Tim, you talked about, uh, while, while everyone's typing out those questions, mm -hmm. uh, you talked about knowledge share. Uh, and one of that is knowledge share, learning from previous experiences. The other one is ad hoc, I couldn't possibly expect an agent to know everything to support our customers. How do I properly mm -hmm. engage the right resources while on call? And I kind of alluded to this, but I kind of, I think I failed to miss that point in terms of, of uh, what is important kind of takeaway thoughts is make sure as you engage that customer on video that you can still connect that customer, the agent, and then a subject matter expert, a three-way or four-way or five-way engagement. So that way you can solve that problem. Because as we know, multiple calls, multiple engagements, scheduling something for future is only gonna just drive uh, customer satisfaction and that friction score, right? That ease of doing business mm -hmm. score way, way down. So you gotta make sure that you can bridge that world together with uh, those support individuals that are making sure those agents shine when they're, they're in front of the customer. Great. Well, guys, it looks like we did a fantastic job of answering all the possible questions these folks have. Um, I really appreciate it. We're going to give everybody back a few minutes. I know that uh, time is precious these days. Uh, we've all, all got uh, many, many things to do. I, I appreciate so much uh, that, that our audience ch chose to spend an hour with us here today. Josh and Vern, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, Vern, we've met before. Josh, first time. Uh, really, really a pleasure. And I, I look forward to uh, to continuing this conversation as we, as we go forward. Um, reminder, everybody in the audience will receive a follow-up email that's going to include a review, a link to uh, view a recording today's presentation. So if you found this uh, event useful, please share it with your colleagues. Uh, once you leave the event, there's going to be a short uh, survey that's going to pop up in your browser window. We really appreciate it if you share your feedback on this webinar. It helps us to tailor our programs, the way we ask questions, the way we're presenting our information uh, to make sure that it serves your interests uh, in, in the ICMI community. And finally, uh, everybody have a, a fantastic day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you back here next time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Take care.